YouTube, it's Brad Phillips, look at this, we've got something new for you, it's the Toyota Land Cruiser, the LC80, and it is absolutely gorgeous, squishy tires all around, as you've come to expect from FMS, and just absolutely beautiful finish, we've got a regular LiPo 2S battery included, as you can see we got the lights on, turn signals and all, very cool reverse lights and tail lights stay on as well as reverse now you may notice that there's a flicker in the video but in real life you don't see the flicker mm -hmm. just the refresh rate on the camera so camera crew you want to drive for a ready? second Kay. or do you want me to start it off I'll go. okay here we go and we're going to go into me. our normal kind of dungeonish area and we're going to see what we can get oh yeah maybe okay. go a little slower there you go. The proportional controls on these things are amazing. And they look so ultra realistic. I'm gonna actually get ahead of you this time. Okay. Because it's been, we had rain the last few days. It's been wonderful for this sort of thing. Absolutely glorious. And you changed it so that we have the maximum output on the- The steering. Steering. So it's the steering dual rates you can turn the knob and it'll give you more output so you can actually turn sharper. Uh oh. Oh no. Yes, turn. No. Oh no. This thing is so sweet. FMS has been coming out with some of the greatest little RC cars and crawlers that we've seen forever. I'm surprised we made it down there. I know, me too. That was really good, actually. It was. I'm going to come down so I can be out of the shadow. Okay, perfect. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, the thing is just absolutely gorgeous. It's doing great. Yeah, drive it down into the into the waterway, the dry riverbed. So cool. It's making it through the grass and stuff really well. And as you can see, it's doing wonderful with the four-wheel drive, not having any issues. Sorry about the shadow, guys. The shadow of God evidently is going by. See if you can uh, see if you can go up on top of that big rock over there, camera crew, okay. right there. Let's see if I can get out. No, of here. turn left, turn left, turn left. Oh, there you go. So you don't tip it. There you go. Now take it out. Perfect. I'm so surprised that it's handling here. this grass the way that it oh, is. Oh, I know. It's doing I'm really surprised. good compared to some of the others we've tried. Yeah. The ground clearance is wonderful. See if you can go out on this the viewing spot. Oh no. Okay, go really slow. Ooh. That's perfect. That's that so is so cool. cool. Let's trade now. I, I can't resist. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Yes. All okay. right, guys, really excited to be driving this. Sorry about the wind noise. It's like incredibly windy. Crazy. And we're trying to uh, keep our bodies low so that we don't like pick up 100% of the wind. But you know, that's one of the beautiful things about cars as opposed to airplanes that we predominantly do here on the channel is that we can, we can drive a car when it's super windy but you're not gonna be flying a plane generally unless your slopes are oh, oh no, we tipped over the- Wait, Two seconds. We almost never tip over that way. <laughs> Although I did just drive over a bluff. Off the cliff. Okay, so we have, oh, we have the battery sticking out and everything. That's hilarious. And that takes, since it's popped out, let's show the people. 380 milliamp hour, 2S, just like what we've come to expect. Beautiful finish on this thing. Water, water resistant on this one. And so, that is one thing we've learned is that with these brushless motors, if you drive them underwater, they usually work for a little bit and then you have weird problems. So if you ever do have to replace a motor, we're thinking about doing a video or two to show replacing the motors. It's not super hard to do. Look at that. We're digging. I love that. So cool. These knobby tires are just amazing, but that bush has got more than we can get through. But we love doing these crawlers just because they're so dang beautiful. But you have to remember, I love the challenge of trying to keep them on their feet. And it looks absolutely phenomenal. I wish I would have had stuff like this as a kid. And if you're an adult child like me, then you can get one for your very own. Check the links in the video description below. You'll be helping to support our channel and the RC content that you see here on Brian Phillips RC. By just buying what you were going to buy anywhere, the way that works is we end up with small commissions from the different retailers, distributors, 
or from the manufacturer, depending on who we're working with for a particular video. And that's how we get these RC items to review. Obviously, we couldn't afford to buy all this stuff on our own. Just hundreds and hundreds of these things. And we love doing it. But at the same time, we know you guys love, love to get these cars for yourself, for your kids, for your family. And Christmas coming up here pretty quick in 2021. Oh wait, it's 2022. Dang it, mm -hmm. time flies when you're having fun, Almost right? A year. That's right. I always get the year wrong. So for 2022, if you need something for Christmas, you better get out there and order these things. The cool thing is with FMS, you can order these things and have them as quick as two or three days. Mm -hmm. Just depends on where you're located in the country, but definitely we try not to bring you guys stuff that you can't buy yet. Let's go out to the clearing here. We'll just go down into the middle of the the waterway, it's been kind of smoothed out nicely. We got the beach here. Got See, there's some big uh, prints. Look at the yep. tracks right there. It's from a dinosaur, obviously. <laughs> it's about as big as a car. By the way, speaking of, this is a 118 scale. We'll do some full speed driving for you. As you can see, it's not the fastest thing and you won't get that with a crawler. The crawlers tend to be pretty slow. In practical reality, you're not hardly moving. But the cool thing is, you don't have to have a car that goes 100 miles an hour to have a great time. Because really at the end of the day, for me it's more about enjoying the way that it interacts with the surroundings. Now obviously there's a lot of excitement that comes with speed. Oh, by the way, you can turn the lights on and off. There's uh, four ways, there's off, there's four ways, there's off, and then on this channel three you can go on or off, which is pretty sweet. So I'm gonna go like this. Did they go bright when I pulled the trigger? I don't. I can't I don't tell. Think I don't so. think they do. They just stay on. So yeah, there's a couple of different settings depending on what switch conditions you put in. Let's see if we can make it back out of the ditch. You want to try that, and then we can wrap things up okay. here. Looks like we got a potential path here. Some broken glass, and we'll just kind of take it up this path here. Check for traffic as we do it. I think we're gonna make it. Oh, yeah. That was like no wow. issue at all. Goodness Did, gracious, guys, that's a huge bump, by the way. They should probably taper that a little better. Did we high center at all? Um, I flipped it you over flipped end it. over end. Yeah. That's well, awesome. I gotta say, folks, this thing drives really good. It like, it's cool. super fun to run. It's not super hard to get up and down bluffs. And I, I'm sorry, I gotta do one more downhill traction test. I'm gonna see if the brakes work good when I go down kind of a loose hill. Remember, just trying to go slow intentionally so it looks ultra realistic. Of course, you're not going to just plow down the hill in a real life environment. Oh. That is so sweet. And then let's try backing up. Let's see if we can back up the hill. A little bit worse on the proportional controls when you're reversing. Ooh, digging a hole now. Oh, no. Oh, no. We'll see if we can get back down and then drive back up the other way. On a loose part of the hill, it's definitely more challenging, folks. But if you haven't experienced using a crawler, it's just a different thing. It's not the same as driving a car in a circle on your driveway. It's definitely fun to drive in grass and all, don't get me wrong, but you do have to have a pretty big car to get away with it. With these crawlers, you have a challenge of just finding traction like you would in a real life experience if you're out doing crawling in the desert or on a mountainside. And so as you can see, we're not gonna make it out this spot. So we have to basically change course. So I'm gonna turn around, try not to tip it. And then we're just gonna drive like a banshee all the way over here. We'll take the waterway. The waterway is a great little highway for us too. We've really enjoyed this spot. We kind of built this spot this season and look at all the silt up here. We get that silt cleared out. It's a good and, exit point though. Yeah, it is. It really works out good. So then up here, we've kind of got this spot where the camera crew actually drove down this spot. Let's see if we can get back out of it. See, it's a little bit more firm and the pack is tighter, but you know, that is just super fun, guys. You should be able to do that with the little RC. These things are just so good anymore. Look at this, almost vertical. See if we can get it. Oh no. Okay, we're going this other way. See, it's all part of the challenge, the victory of getting up the hill. It's so much fun, folks. So if you haven't ever experienced a rock crawler, this is definitely what you're looking at. This is a rock crawler, and it's definitely a fun way to do RC. 
and I think you should definitely consider one. If you haven't ever bought one, check the link in the video description below. FMS is second to none on putting these things together, and they're always coming out with all sorts of new choices too. So if you like this one, but maybe you like another one we reviewed in recent history, we'll have links to them down below. But also, if you're not sure if we've reviewed something in the past, check out www.brianphillipsrc.com and we're gonna have some links for all the equipment we've reviewed. That includes airplanes, boats, floats, everything. We're talking all the stuff, including ride-on equipment. But if you like this one in particular, the link is right in the video description below. And just below that, we'll have all the similar choices. And really good product, FMS, good job. We're just loving these little, 118 scales are great. Mm -hmm. Less money, less battery, less tied up. And the next thing you know is when you find that one six scale that you just can't live without, you could have two or three of these in the time, wait for that one six you can't live without and then buy it. So just love these little things, super fun guys. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, we'll unbox this next. Hopefully it's not quite so windy inside. Okay folks, it's really windy so we apologize for that. Grass Ops, we never actually showed it on this car, but it does amazing, and we forgot to mention it. If you look at this, this grass is not super well kept right now. It's probably about four to five inches tall, and the thing just glides across the top of it. And I mean, it's not super smooth here. It's not terrible. Now we're kind of getting into the sod that was laid for our new house when we built it. And uh, as you can see, it does really good in the sod. And we'll do a little reverse action just so you can see that it does that as well. Some of these RC cars do not do very good in grass. So we just wanted to demonstrate that this one does a great job in the grass. And as you can see, it looks sweet doing it. Yes, you still get your nice tight proportional control as you've come to expect on these little rock crawlers. Don't forget to turn up your steering so that you have that tight steering radius, that tight turning radius that you want when you're driving around and trying to do rock crawling. So definitely a great, great car. The LC80 Land Cruiser by Toyota, brought to you by Rock Hobbies FMS. Definitely check it out in the video description below. We're gonna do the unbox next, stay tuned. YouTube, we've got a box from Rock Hobbies. All right, cool. So we do ground Wednesdays, as you may have figured out from being Wednesday and uh, this being a surface or ground vehicle. Oh yeah, look at that, Toyota Land Cruiser. Amazing, from FMS Rock Hobbies. Let's go ahead and get right in. All right, so what do we have here? We have a beautiful modern day SUV sort of thing. In injection molded hard body, wow. Whew. Ooh, that's exciting. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds good. Uh, functional hood, scale interior features, Multifunctional light control system, channel three for on, off, and functional indicators, meaning turn signals. Uh, Rhino bumper kit and roof rack, sweet. Uh, high traction MT tire with one inch internal bead lock wheel, which is nice, that's the way they usually come. They're squishy tires is what I call them. Nice foam case as you can see here. Realistic pinion and ring gear axle, high torque transmission with 84 to one FDL. Water resistant electronics with 2.4 gigahertz radio. And one thing we've noticed about the water resistance is that the water resistance is still limited. So just be a little bit aware of that. It's not waterproof. It's not a submarine, okay? <laughs> um, okay, so high torque, oversized 55T brushed motor, 7.2 volt 2S LiPo, providing up to 30 minute runtime. And we have personally exper experienced that. They will run for a long time. In fact, they'll run so long that they outlast <laughs> at times, not on one charge, but maybe two or three, the crappiest AAA batteries you can find, which we provide and you will have to provide two. Uh, generally, they need four on the smaller sizes in a AAA size. And then on the bigger sizes, a lot of times they'll need four AA's. And then you also need to have some sort of a USB adapter for the plug of your country's origin. Uh, chassis mounted servo, aluminum frame rails, and then tuned coil shocks. Okay, so let's see what it looks like. It looks amazing. Obviously the artwork on the box is beautiful. They do a really good job at FMS of having really nice artwork on their boxes. Not that that's why you're buying it. You're buying for the artwork inside of the box. Okay, so this one opens lengthwise. Oh yeah. Not hinged. 
Instruction manual is folded, really folded this time. Okay, so there you go, there's the instruction manual. We're gonna not read that at all. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there's an addendum, guys. If it is not in use for a long time, unplug it and take off the battery to prevent battery leakage. Hmm. Okay, so as is true with most batteries, if you're not using it, you should be unplugging the batteries. Don't just turn it off, okay? And what they're yeah. talking about is battery leakage as in the electrical load still leaks out. Okay, so the pistol grip, evidently they wanted to protect that from its hood, which is nice, which looks amazing. We've got the standard pistol grip, no texture on here, just a little bit of traction. And I do like the non-covered up style, so you don't have to break those things off. Channel four push button, momentary, and then three position switch for channel three. And then of course we have the steerable steering. And then you'll wanna change your uh, steering dual rates to the highest output so that the steering wheel will command change to this instead of to this. And we'll show you that in a few minutes. And then obviously, and we're gonna save the best for last, pulling out the car, we've got the charger, and then the little thing, the little tool for the tires, which I have found to work pretty crappy on the off-road tires. We'll just throw that back in there. Uh, some of the wheels make it hard to reach. So you end up using a nut driver anyway. So that being said, it is nice that they include the tool. Just a little twisty tie holds that together. This is a balanced charger. So we'll go ahead and get in a little further and then a bag and the foam so we can lay that to the side. This of course is an unbox. So you wanna see what's in it. And boy, that is a really gorgeous. Just looking at it really close. That is so cool. I wanna come over here so the camera crew can get a really close up shot. One miss I can see already is there's no LEDs in this light bar. Okay. And then in the back, squishy tire. Oh, listen, oh, that's so cool. Got license plate on there, a little ladder on the back. Doors do not open on this model, which is fine. Plastic, but it looks like metal. It's heavy, which is nice. Good metal frame. There's your brushed motor. Seems to be the really popular size, FMS. Okay, what servo do we have in here? We have a singular nine gram servo, nine gram digital plastic, okay? Ball joints on all these connection points, which is really nice. Looks like they're just spring-loaded shocks or spring-loaded springs. <laughs> they're actually not shocks. But this being a 118 scale, is this 118 scale? Mm -hmm. Okay, 118 scale. We've got all the scale features. We've got the snorkel here. If it was an internal combustion. Ooh, it looks like we do have two lights inside of there. Sweet. And then the bumper is super detailed, but there's a pass-through here. It looks like that pass-through might be used for something. And then if you look right here, there's actually hook points, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. So really excited to get this one opened, and it looks like it's going to be kind of challenging to peel here because that is going to be blocked by the bumper. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get in there. I might have to use a tool. I think under normal circumstances, you're probably going to have to use a tool mm -hmm. without taking off the bumper, right? Probably. Unless you get really lucky. Maybe once the sticker's not on there, it'll open Oh, it'll, it'll be fine. But I'm just saying I can't quite get my fingers in there. So I'm using forceps. Now, these are forceps or hemostats. Uh, they have kinds that have bent tips and kinds that have straight tips. And these are invaluable tool if you're in the RC hobby because you can get into very tight spots. And the articulation point being back here is not necessarily good. Sometimes you want the articulation point way up here. So you can stick it way deep inside of an opening, pass through a frame like this, and then still open. You see what I'm talking about? That's really handy. You won't be able to do that with like a needle nose plier. Okay. So, and if you're not familiar with the channel, guys, it's Brian Phillips RC here. Obviously, this is Brian Phillips talking, and then my camera crew, my wife of many years, is Megan Phillips, and she is, of course, the camera crew, sometimes oh, yeah. lovingly referred to as the camera crew. <laughs> so we're here to bring you guys the latest in RC stuff, and also fixed wing, helicopters, quads, and we've introduced a little bit more on the surface side. We've always done a little bit of the surface stuff, but we just haven't done it as much because our primary focus has been the fixed wing stuff. But we really like this stuff, and in fact, I've been doing it longer than I've been doing the airplanes. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, it's a different receiver. Look at this. It's got real servo plugs on it. Oh, it is different, yeah. Yeah, but those are like JST plugs there. That's totally cool. 
So this is an FMS FHR4A, it says, for the protocol. That's kind of nice. And then a waterproof or water resistant on off. So this one I think is a little bit more water resistant than some of the other ones we've done recently. Um, you can usually tell because they'll put some sort of a rubberized coating over the top of the connectors or the plugs like this. Or excuse me, that is a push button. I don't know why I couldn't say it right. And then of course you've got your battery which is included. We'll show you how to charge it real quick. We're also gonna show you how to put batteries in this right now because that is after all one of the steps but you have to provide your own batteries for the pistol grip transmitter. So, adapter, this is just whatever run of the mill adapter you've got. And it indicates on here, it says charger, model blah, input is DC five volts at two amps, the output is 7.4 volts at 1000 milliamp hours. So they wanna see at least five volts at two amps, okay? So this is not two amps, that means it's gonna charge slower, okay? And uh, how can you tell how many amps it is? If you look at your charger, Right here, this is 5.2 volts at 1.35 amps. So we are a little bit higher than 1.35 amps at five volts because the power is the same, regardless of which direction you measure it. Of course, the power is a result of the, um, it's a result of the current and the, the voltage. So there you go, current voltage, okay. Okay, then this is a balance lead charger. So you'll plug this in, it's keyed, so you're only gonna plug it in one way. If you try to plug it in wrong, it won't work, but I'm not gonna prove a point because you could probably jam it in there if you really wanted to try to burn it up. And you'll see that those lights go from a solid red to a solid red with a flashing green light. When it's done charging, you'll note that it's going to go to a solid green light. Okay, so this is 7.2 volts at 350 milliamp hours. And then it says the watt hours. This is a 5C pack, meaning it discharges at uh, 5C. If you wanted to have a faster discharge rate, that number would be bigger. It would be like 20 or 30C or 100C. Uh, so like on a flight pack, here's, you know, here's like a 50C pack. So that's 10 times the charge, the discharge rate. Or right here we've got, what is this, a 30C? Mm -hmm. So a 30C, 5,000 milliamp hours. This is a 6S, so it's got 6Ls in series. You're like, but there's no balance lead on that. That's true, it's just like a normal battery. It's just got a discharge lead or a, a charge lead and then it has this thing which is a smart lead. And there would normally be a discharge, excuse me, a balance lead that would come out like this except it would have instead of three wires because this is only two cells. This would have seven wires because it's six cells. And you're like, why seven and not six? Because this is one cell in series with this cell in series together makes this, okay? So if you were to take an ohm meter and measure the red to the red, you would have zero ohms. It would be like the same thing, okay? And then if you took an ohm meter and you measured between black and black, you would have zero ohms because that would be common, okay? So between this and this is the first cell, and between this and this is the second cell, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter which way you measure it, but you'll measure the individual cell voltage here or the individual cell voltage here. And then you'll measure the pair of them in series in this case here. And that's why this is called a 2S for series, two cells in series. Now, why not 2C? Because C is used in two other variety of parameters on LiPo batteries. C as in charge rate and C as in discharge rate. Don't ask me why there's two different C ratings. It's pretty annoying to me that they didn't come up with a better way of doing that, but that's the way it is. So now that you know how to use this, this is also called a, uh, I'm sorry, Molex connector. And these are very common in the surface vehicles. And then we have them in a few of our aircraft as well. So just uh, note that if this is a 5C pack, and your airplane calls for a 50C pack or a 30C pack or 20C pack, 5C is inferior, so it is not a good idea to use it in an airplane that calls for a 20C pack because you're gonna puff this almost immediately. Now, also, is it okay to use a 50C pack in a 5C application? Yes, but it's not okay to use, now, the only caveat to that would be if you have a transmitter pack, 
You don't want to go for a really high C rating because it's going to discharge slowly over time. It's sort of a waste of money in my opinion. And also when they make transmitter packs, they make them intentionally a low C rating because the objective is to discharge slowly over a long period of time. But just because we have a higher C rating does not mean that you're going to necessarily pull that much load quickly. It depends on how you use the equipment. Okay. So hopefully that is not lost on all of you guys. If you're curious about batteries, we talk a lot about them here on the channel. So take your transmitter next, pop this thing open. Now, obviously a lot of you are already going to know all that stuff, but just remember one of the main safety features of the hobby is to carefully charge your batteries, do it on a hard surface. It's non-flammable. If this thing would catch on fire right now, it would be not a big deal. Of course, I'd like to keep those away from there. If this caught on fire right now, it would suck. It would be a mess. It'd be like smoking stuff in the room and it wouldn't be great to breathe. But the thing is, nobody's gonna die because it's not really gonna spread. It's just gonna burn right here and nothing's gonna happen. It's gonna be annoying, but nobody dies, okay? These batteries are pretty small and pretty safe. These batteries are less safe and they're definitely not small, <clears throat> especially when you got seven or nine of them in a stack. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so there's a plus and there's a minus here. The minus is the flat part of the battery versus the nub, which is the positive, okay? So the positive is gonna be pointing up here. So I'll just drop those in with the negative down and the positive up. Positive, woo! Positive down, negative up, just like this. Push it over, it's spring-loaded, and then close it. And then you turn this thing on, and you've got some lights that come on. Those lights do tend to blind you, by the way, which is sort of annoying. Now, I'm just going to show you guys this as a moment of clarity because we want to make sure we're full disclosure on this channel. Normally, we'd grab another battery, but I think today our video is going to be short because look how awesome the audio is going to be. Show them that flag. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm using this That's XPC amazing. battery checker. This is going to test our battery for voltage. So we just plug it in here. It's gonna tell us what we got. 77% is plenty good. We're not gonna be doing a 30 minute video of driving. And that's one of the beauties of using these small packs in the cars. As you would think, how can this little thing run that radio controlled car for like a half an hour? I remember as a kid, we would have to get like eight double A's or a nine volt, the worst, the bane of existence. The only people that got nine volts were the smoke alarms. And they would last for, you know, however long they were supposed to last. Of course, you're supposed to change them once a year. We'd wait well, like they just every 10 at years. Three in the morning. That's right. Chirp, chirp. So anyway, nowadays we've got these lipos and you only use the very top of the voltage. So it's like 4.2 volts down to about 3.3, 3.2, maybe three on a bad day. And then below that, you drop off really fast. So if you watch a discharge rate, if you're fully charged here and you're discharged here, it just drops off like this done okay so we just operate in this little band up here and you just watch the discharge if you were to watch this with the voltage alarm which is something we use in the airplane world you can actually do this too if you really want to squeeze every bit of life out of your battery these little voltage alarms are super handy they're very cheap and they're small and they're reasonably light and they're obnoxious when they go low so that's good so you could actually set it says two cells and now it shows the nominal voltage at 7.98 4.0 compared to 3.98, okay? Now you can press this button. You can change where you want it to alarm, okay? You can have it off all the way down to 2.7. So in a car, I would say, you know, like 2.7 is fine, but I wouldn't run it that way. Myself, I'd run it at like 3.1, maybe 3.2, or 3.3 in an airplane that's prop driven, or maybe 3.4 on an EDF, because you wanna have enough juice to get your Final, go around and then land. Okay, so we're not gonna use that just so you know, but you can use those things and then it'll alarm when you get to lower voltage. Now also these things will start flashing lights when they get low and that's fine, but it's also kind of like a dangerously low level, meaning that you've probably, um, you'll do irreparable harm to your battery if you run them that low every single time. And guess what? Your kids are gonna run them down every time until they're dead. So just plan on it. All right, so there's the little pocket back here for a battery. And so you can set it in there. Obviously you wanna have this one in your hand and it's really cool that it just goes under the hood like this, but we've seen that from all the modern vehicles we've reviewed. And look how nice that is. It's just a super clean package. And then as you can see, we're already working with a turn signal. That's so cool. Now this button here is gonna change our light condition. So we have four ways, we have off. We have four ways, we have off. 
Okay, so then what else do we have? Channel three, lights on, and four ways on. And I don't see anything else there. It's just on or off. So now I'm gonna close this. I don't think it snaps. Some of them snap. Now let's see how this does. We're just, these are full proportional controls. And what I mean by proportional is you can turn a little bit and it'll go a little bit. Or you can turn a lot and it'll go a lot. Now you'll see this is called steering dual rates. So watch this, when I turn the wheel, now watch what happens when I turn this. It goes further. Okay, so when you turn the wheel, you can see when you turn this dual rates knob, steering dual rates, it says STD slash R, you'll see what happens is it reduces the amount of rate you have. So when you turn it this way, you have nothing. Okay, see it's barely anything. And then you turn it that way, it goes to almost all the way. So you get the maximum amount of throw. Now let's show you the, the proportional controls on the drivetrain is really where it's at, folks. So as you can see, you can turn super sharp, really cool. And then it looks like we do have backup lights. So I'll show you that. So we've got tail lights. Now I'm gonna put it in backup. You see how they get brighter? Brake lights and backup lights. And yes, the lights are on on the tail all the time. And then you can turn on the four ways or you can turn them off or you can turn off the lights and then the middle setting, it's all the same. So there's no high beams, it's just on or off. And then it looks like you have braking when you first kick on and then reverse when you do it a second time. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So when you're going forward, braking, then when you let go and you go back, it's reverse. And the proportional controls are as we've come to expect over the last few years while we've been doing these reviews. It just works really good. Now it's not a speed demon and I'm trying to make sure that there's no other, I don't think there's a gearbox on this one, right? It's just direct, yeah, it, there is a gearbox, but there's no selectable gear. Some of these things, believe it or not, are coming with gearboxes where you can go from a high and a low speed setting. So obviously this is a crawler, so it's gonna give you the capability of really going up some steep inclines and over obstructions and things like that. We do have bananas today. Should we use the bananas quick before we go outside? No, they're your bananas to eat. I know, I have to eat these things. Mm -hmm. So these bananas were like the most underripe pieces of crap ever. So it's gonna be perfect to drive across. So as you can see, it's a little bit too tall, this banana, so I'll have to, maybe we can flip the bananas upside down. Now, why do we always drive over bananas? First of all, because we have bananas in our kitchen. And so we just have learned that they work really good because they give you a little bit of grip and you can do cool things like this. That looks so sweet. I mean, it is a banana after all. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so I can't get over the banana pile, but I can definitely do some crawling and you just get perfect track. Oh no, everybody died. So as you guys can see, the soft pneumatic tires are something else. They look super ultra realistic and they also offer a ton of traction. So I think I might be able to drive over the bananas from this side. Let's see if we can get in there. Ooh, no, I can't get in there. We have to back up real slow. See, I'm right to the edge of the cliff here. Okay, that's not gonna work. So we'll see if we can go in at an angle and see if we can get that wheel. Ooh, yeah, get in there. See if you, can, oh, oh, see, it's gonna wanna, it's gonna wanna tip. If I turn the wheel, it's gonna tip. So you can go real slow. And you can get in there and do some cool challenges. And the 2.4 gigahertz on the transmitter, see, it just wants to tip over. So one of the things you can do if you wanna cheat and make this thing a little easier to stay upright is to tie some weight to the bottom. You could do lead weights that you stick up in there, like the peel and stick style, you can stick up inside of here. But what we normally do is we just try to take rocks and put them in the bed of the truck. Well. Since this is a closed cab, it's a little harder to do that. So that's why I say the idea is you want to get the weight as low as possible so that you kind of keep it on its feet. But if you put it up here, you're still over the top of the wheel. So you're going to have a harder time doing that. So there you go. See, and it just wants to tip over. So anyway, the banana trick is not working very good today, but you get the idea. It definitely is working and with Crawlers, you definitely want to be able to crawl, otherwise it sort of defeats the purpose. So this thing is awesome. We're obviously gonna take it outside. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the outside footage, but this thing looks amazing. I love a good modern looking radio controlled car or truck. And I love the fact that everything looks absolutely phenomenally scale. 
And this is just, I mean, we've even got the lines for the defrosters mm -hmm. on the back window. I mean, this is the type of detail that we're getting now on these cars. And it's just amazing. Do we have an instrument cluster? Yes, we do. Show them the instrument cluster and there's a shifter in the center. So this would be like a five speed. That is so cool. It has a sunroof. Oh, it does? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's totally a sunroof here. We'll do it with the, with the light there. That's so cool. You can see through it. Here, like this. Right there. That is so cool. So definitely like this Toyota Land Cruiser. And there is, they say it's an LC80 Land Cruiser. I'm not sure what the LC80 stands for. Maybe you Land Cruiser lovers can tell us in the comments below. And if you guys like this sort of content, I mean, we do it on just a kind of a limited basis here on Surface Wednesdays here on Brian Phillips RC. But we really do like the Surface vehicles. We're gonna try to get some more bashers mixed in and some, maybe some boats if we can figure out a good waterway. But uh, we are really enjoying bringing these quality RC cars. They're so much better than we got as kids. And so if you guys are thinking about maybe a Christmas gift for your family member or for yourself or whatever, get them ordered sooner than later because what's gonna happen is some of these things are gonna come in and out of stock and there's gonna be containers coming over and you're gonna have sparse choices toward the end of the season. So definitely get them ordered early and have them in the closet hiding or just play with them and then get another one between now and then and pretend like it's the same thing. So anyway, this thing looks super fun. Can't wait to bring it to you on Brian Phillips RC. Guys, so much more to come. Stay tuned. We've got some early releases coming soon and we know that you're gonna love them. And plus, don't forget, it is getting toward the end of the season. So ground vehicles do well in winter and airplanes are a little bit harder in winter in my experience. So definitely a good reason to have a few of these in your uh, hangar or garage or whatever you want to call it because when the snow flies sometimes it's a little bit less fun to fly airplanes but it's still really fun to do these things so keep that in mind and remember christmas is in the middle of winter so if we're fortunate enough to have good weather that's great but i think we're probably realistic in assuming that you can drive a car even when the wind is blowing 30 miles an hour or you can drive it around your house you can't yeah. fly a plane around your house but you can drive through your living room sometimes well sometimes all right guys thanks for watching come back for more